One of the most important pieces of equipment on your boat is the bilge pumps. These are the pumps that shoot water out of your boat in an emergency or when you accidentally get water inside your boat. The pumps on this boat were old, they weren't working and the setup wasn't suitable so that needed changing as well as the stern gland which was also pretty old. This job took a while longer than expected as the transmission was super seized up so I'll show you through that. If you're interested in a week of sailing with some of the coolest sailors on earth in the BVI's in December check out the Odyssey Sailing Festival. There's a couple of tickets left but for now enjoy this video of me fixing my boat. Hello, so um new stern gland time i've got a new one here I'll show you what it looks like so this is called it's actually called a volvo dripless seal although this isn't made by volvo it's made by orbit trade i think it said it's basically one of these fat things so it looks like this it's got like this double body inside it that goes over the stern tube and um, this is to replace like a leaky one for example like the ones that you have like the old school ones where you pump oil into them or you can get like some fancy ones now i think they're called like P pss or pps seals i don't know something like that where you've got like a carbon plate that spins around this one works via these lips so if you see these lips inside these are like super tight lips <laughs> And what you're meant to do is put in between those two lips there, you're meant to put a uh, lubrication just to help cool it down. Most people don't bother with it actually. So the old one is already off. I'll show you what we're dealing with. Also, just to note, if you're ever going to do this, make sure that you put this that way. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't damage the lips because those lips are quite delicate. You don't want to damage those. Um, so, right, I'll show you where it's going. I'll show you the old one. So you'll recall, well, I might even put it in the same video, I don't know, let's see. Right, hello internet people. So I'm going to show you what Chris has done. This is now finished. <clears throat> so this little piece here, which was the um, barb that goes over to here. So this is for the water circulation for the um, stern tube. It's got a Volvo dripless seal there but I'm gonna get a new one of these because I think this is quite old so this just threaded into here with like two threads on a basically on this piece of fiberglass and I, I think the I think the actual thing threaded and it broke off and then um, there basically just wasn't enough to actually stick it back down to so what Chris did was drill the hole out build this little um I don't know what you call this little mountain of fiberglass here and get it locked in place so this is now like super strong this is a new um this is a new everything so this is a new through hole valve elbow and then barb fitting here so now that connects up with this hose to there and this is way better and way stronger because the original idea was stupid so it just said like a few little threads if you put enough pressure on that you could have easily just snapped it off and i think it was snapped off because the previous owner or whoever had tried to put some glue around it but um yeah chris sorted it out did a proper job built it all up with fiberglass and epoxy so it's now really strong so i'm gonna get this on oh this is the clamp it's got like this huge bugger clamp that goes on um so this area here is what chris masterfully talent oh this is the clamp it's got like this huge bugger clamp that goes on um so this area here is what chris masterfully talent talentfully um fixed for me before so we put the new um through hull on there um and then we've got the new tube on there and it was chris that did that fiberglass modification so the old one better come off it's uh it's still there i just slid it up just to take a look but that's there there's no sign of this one being damaged but i don't know how old it is uh, volvo recommends that you um change them i think every five years actually so i need to take off the prop shaft from down there so i've already taken one bolt off um, i need to remove the prop shaft from the coupling the coupling is this black thing here that black thing is the coupling 
So I need to take that off there. Um, once I've taken that off, I then slide this back a bit, put the new stern gland on, stick that over here, tighten it, reattach the prop to the coupling, then reattach the uh, coupling to the uh, transmission. Sounds easy. Um, it should be, and it can be. It depends how seized those bolts are down there. They don't look like, they don't look that bad. Um, the engine has had quite a bit of work done to it. I think it's had a new turbo put on. It's got a new filter housing there. It's had a new oil pump put on, um, fuel pump. Um, it's had like quite a bit of stuff done to it. So I think the engine has actually been relatively well serviced. It sounds great when it runs. So um, yeah, let's give it a shot. So um, it was pretty difficult to access the coupling. So I've removed all this. So the cupboard comes out the partition comes out and basically you've got full access to the back of the engine which is actually really cool that's great that's such good access so yeah here's the cup link it's um stuck on the prop so basically i've just got a bunch of wd-40 and i'm letting it sit inside there to hopefully trickle through and ease through any uh you know like seized areas rust areas and um yeah we'll just Leave it for a while, leave it for a day, maybe put some heat on it, and then we'll whack it off. Right, prop shaft. I've got it back in, and I've got it in place. It's here. I had a second issue here. So when we were pulling the um, when we were pulling the cup link off, it damaged the top of the thread on the um, on the propeller shaft when it came to removing the nut. And um, <clears throat> basically I had to thread a new nut onto the propeller shaft because uh, it was a bit damaged at the top. And that took a lot of energy and wasted a lot of my body fluid. That sounded weird and disgusting. My apologies. Um, I just sweat a lot basically. I should have gone with that from the beginning. That would have been much easier to explain. Anyway, so it's back in place now. New um, Volvo stern gland there. Uh, cup link is back in nice and tight so I'm now just going to connect this back up to the transmission I'm going to clean all this area because I don't like having a dirty boat contrary to every single video I've ever released where my boat is fucking filthy um, when I'm not working on it I don't like to have a dirty boat or I don't like the bilges and all this type of stuff to be dirty anyway I like to lift up floorboards and go oh that looks nice um, and I can't at the moment because there's crap everywhere it looks like it's not been cleaned in decades Maybe it's not. Um, cool, so I'm gonna get this back in place. I'm gonna get this connected. Cool, this area is looking like really nice now. Looking clean, I got under the engine, cleaned all that, there was loads of salt residue and oil and all sorts that's under there, so that's all sorted, bolts are in nice and tight, so uh, yeah, just going to package this back up now, get this all back in and in shape. <clears throat> cool, so I've just taken apart the little um, electrical box that's down there, I just think that's too low down, like if you look at where it is, I mean... It's a, it's a pretty bilgy boat. Um, you, I mean, you are talking like hundreds and hundreds of litres to get to that point before it reaches that level. But you want that as high as possible. Like, I don't know why that isn't like here. <clears throat> like, surely that's just better. You know, the, the higher it is, the safer it is. And you can actually see, if you take a look inside, you can see how there is, some water has got in there at some point. That may seem high, you know, even if it's going to take like 400 litres of water in there for it to get water in. If you're offshore and you're going downwind, your boat is, you know, slopping all over the place. If you're in that type of condition when you have a problem, that could get wet. As soon as that gets wet, um, your bilges might just shut off. So I don't like that. I'm going to raise that. I'm going to bring it up and I'm going to attach it onto here. Um, I think it's going to be a lot better and safer at this type of level. The cables will all reach because the cables all come from this point. Um, so yeah, that's something I'm gonna do just for safety. I think that's a much better option. So yeah, this is all the old shit. This is like the old float switch. Cool, 
so I've got all the old stuff out. Got all the uh, wires out of there. This is all the old stuff. All here. So this is a 1500 gallon per hour and this is a 500 gallon per hour. So I've got um, SVB online, SVB24. They're actually okay. They've got pretty decent prices. They deliver anywhere in Europe for like 25 euros. So um, I've got some bilge pumps to order. I'm gonna get that order in now. So I'm gonna get all this cleaned up, wait for the bilge pumps to arrive, then I can connect all the new stuff. I'm just gonna generally clean up this area as well because there's probably more pipes than is actually necessary or needed. But it was just generally messy. You couldn't even get your hands down there to like, access the bilge, it was a nightmare. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get all this cleaned up now. <music> Yeah, so I've got my bilge pumps, so I'm now getting the area ready to install them. These things are like plumbed up slightly differently. So I've got this bilge area down here, which for some bizarre reason water gathers here instead of going down there to the main bilge area. It's a pretty stupid design. Everybody who owns one of these boats complains about this. Um, so I've got this bilge pump here, which is a 1200 gallon per hour presuming yeah 1200 gallon per hour um so this is a rule automatic what's bizarre about this is that this is a 1200 gallon and it's this big the 1500 that i took out was literally like three times the size of this which is really weird and it's fit for the same hose so maybe the pumps are just like way better than they were 20 years ago or something i don't know but that was pretty strange so what i've done i've supplemented that one being a little bit smaller with this extra one here which is a 650 gallon per hour automatic again because i don't like float switches um and this will sit in there so rather than loads of water resting in there and then only that stuff getting sucked up now it's going to get sucked up from here as well they come pre-installed with the joker valves that one's on there and that one is inside there so i'm just going to change this little junction box i'm going to move this over to here so they can both reach from there and then from there and then we should be good to go that should be it for the um new bilge pumps installed so a little bit more capacity and way more useful because previously loads of water would just hang around in that middle bilge which uh now it won't do which is good which is also stupid because that's where like the majority of the keel bolts are so stupid design um so yeah that's what we're doing <laughs> So I've relocated the junction box to here. That was actually right down there before. You can see where those old holes were just above that um, like mesh box. So I didn't like it down there. So I much prefer it up here. That's a lot safer. So I'm going to tuck this one in here like that. So I've still got lots of clearance down there. These wires will be able to reach. The wires from down there will be able to reach inside. So that should be all good. I'm quite happy with the way this layout is going to work, I just need to melt these a little bit. So um, the uh, new bilge pump hose can connect into it because it's a bit tough. <laughs> cool, so I've got everything plumbed in here. I just cut that down to size and I heated this up so it gave, gave it a nice bend, burned it a little bit there, who cares. Got the hose clamp on there, that's in the right place. Got everything wired in to that junction box there, which is cool. So yeah, this is looking loads cleaner than what it was like a few weeks ago. Let's put a few more zip ties holding this stuff in place. But yeah, this is looking loads better. Because another thing that I didn't like as well on the system that was in, the float switch was sat on that little wooden piece in the corner it's actually plastic but it was sat on that so that bilge pump was only flicking on when um that entire the hole down there was completely full of water not only that but there was about three inches of water in total in this space so um yeah it was just super useless it was just it was just really crap so yeah feeling much better about this and what time is it it's coming up to nine o'clock. I've got a chat with um, Laura, uh, Laura Decker. I did a podcast with her a 
a few weeks ago, so I'm having a chat with her about the BVIs tonight at 11. Um, but I need to do some polyurethane. I need to do some varnishing. I wanted to do all this because I prepped it all today. So that's ready for a first coat of satin. So is that, so is that. That's ready for a few coats of clear. Um, but I need to eat, I'm hungry. <laughs> so I've got to eat first.